to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man overcomes much. James chapter 5, verse number 16. We welcome you today to our study of prayer. The disciples request in Luke chapter 11, verse 1, Lord, teach us to pray ought to be on the heart and mind of every child of God today as we have the privilege and the opportunity to communicate with Almighty God knowing He hears us and that He will bless us if it's according to His will. We welcome you today to our study of the subject of prayer. We're so glad that you've joined us. We hope that, you, that you've got your Bible ready and in hand. If you don't, take just a minute to locate that as we're going to look to the Word of God in our study of the wonderful subject of prayer. As always, my friend, today's lessons are being brought to you by individual congregations, individual members, and congregations of the Churches of Christ. The Lord's Church in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly, whether it be on Sunday morning or Sunday night or Wednesday night. You'd be an honored guest at any of their services. You'll find people there who love God, who are concerned about what the Bible says, and who simply want to help men and women get to heaven. And so stop by and visit the church in your area. If you've got a Bible question, you'd like to know more about salvation or the church or why they worship the way they do, whatever it may be, they'd be happy to sit down and study God's Word with you. Friend, here at the Gospel of Christ, we'd also like to help you in your study of God's Word. Check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can access all our material. We've got audio lessons, video lessons, uh, transcripts, study questions, articles, just a good host of Bible study material to supplement your study of the Word of God. Likewise, if uh, you've got a question or would like to have further study, don't hesitate to contact us at the information given at the end of the broadcast as well. And also, we want to encourage you to download the Gospel of Christ apps that are available both for the Android and the Apple phones from the respective Play stores. They're a great way to study the Word of God in our fast-paced world today. The subject of prayer. It's an interesting subject, powerful subject. It's a well-needed subject today, but we might begin by asking, what exactly is prayer? You know, a lot of people have said a lot of interesting things about prayer that I think help us key into the importance of it. Leonard Ravenhill once said, if we are weak in prayer, we're weak everywhere. And friend, I believe that's exactly true. Francis Fenelon rightly stated, of all the duties enjoined by Christianity, none is more essential and yet more neglected than prayer. And so when we think about the idea of prayer, what exactly are we talking about? Well, let's just give for a moment just a textbook definition, and then we'll notice how the Bible defines that as well. Webster's Dictionary defines prayer as to address God with adoration, confession, supplication, or thanksgiving. And while this may be kind of a textbook definition of prayer, it, it, in some ways it helps us, but in other ways it doesn't fully grasp the definition Scripture places upon prayer. Let me illustrate. The most common word in the New Testament for prayer is prosukamai. And that word is a combination of two words. The word pros, a preposition meaning uh, direction, to, to or toward in the direction of. In the word ukamai, which means to express one's longing or one's desire. And so the idea of the most common word in the New Testament is it is an expressing toward the direction of God of one's most inmost longing 
or desire. And so that's one of the key words that we see in the New Testament. Uh, another word that is used fairly regular as well in the New Testament is the word eratao. This word is defined as to ask or to make one's request. And so in this aspect, prayer is asking God. It's making a request known to God. And then there's a, another word that we want to mention that I think paints. I think paints a beautiful picture of prayer. And this is the word parakalao. This word means to call to one side, to entreat or to ask for help. Let, let me give you an example of it. Jesus Christ in the garden, in Matthew 26, verse 53, he used this word for prayer when he said, Do you not think that I can now pray to my Father and He will provide me with more than 12 legions of angels? You know, Jesus could have called to His aid. He could have called to His side all these angels to help Him when He's facing this great time of difficulty and anguish. And so when we look at prayer from this viewpoint, it is Christians calling God and heaven's throne to their side to help. And thus prayer is expressing one's desire, making one's request to divine throne, or asking God for help in time of need. My friend, I want us to understand today that prayer is not a figment of somebody's imagination. It is not talking to an imaginary friend. The Bible teaches that prayer is real. Christians believe prayer is real because Scripture says so. Jesus taught us to pray, Our Father who art in heaven. Matthew chapter 6, verse number 9. James 5, 16. The effect of fervent prayer of a righteous man overcomes much. Isaiah 38, 1 Kings 9. God said, I've heard your prayers. I've seen your tears. Acts 10 verse 31, we know that God heareth not the prayer of sinners, yet Acts 10 31 says, if we obey God, God does hear our prayers. Psalm 6 verse 9, Psalm 66 verse 19 as well. You see, we believe, Christians believe, prayer is real because of the visible signs of its power today. We see power in prayer in the healing of the sick. Is any among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, and the prayer of faith will save him. James 5, verses 13 through 16. We've seen that. We know that is real. We see the power of prayer in evangelism. We, Jesus taught us, pray the Lord of hosts will send out laborers into his harvest. Matthew 9, verses 36 through 38. And we pray that God will open doors, that God will soften hearts, and people do see the gospel and obey that. We, we, we pray in the midst of trouble that God will help us to overcome that and help us to remain faithful. And every one of us realizes that is true in our own lives. We pray for governing rulers and authorities. 1 Timothy 2, verses 1 through 5. And God works in the kingdoms of men today. You see, Christians believe prayer is real because of our faith in God and His Word. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. James 1 verse 5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him not ask, in, let him not ask with doubting, but with faith. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea tossed to and fro by the wind. Let not that man, James says, suppose that he'll receive anything from the Lord. We ask in faith because we believe. God exists based on the evidence. We believe His Word is real based on the evidence we find. But friend, I, I want you to understand something about prayer. Prayer is not naturalism. That is, the naturalist approach to life says that we're completely governed by the law, natural laws of nature. Those laws cannot be changed or nulled. 
an old, what's going to happen is going to happen. There's nothing we can do to change that. That, that, that. That's not what prayer is about. If such is the case, then Dan Barker in his book, Losing Faith in Faith, posed the right question. If the answer to prayer are merely what God wills all along, then why would we pray? Friend, while we don't live in the age where men today have the ability to restore somebody's lame or uh, arm that's been cut off or to go to the cemetery and raise somebody from the dead or to, uh, of their own power by touching someone, cast out some illness today. While, while we don't believe we have that power today to do that, we do believe God still works today providentially, through his means and his ways, through prayer. Ambrose Pierce in the Devil's Dictionary defined prayer as to ask that the laws of the universe be annulled in behalf of a single petitioner confessed unworthily. Friend, we're saying that God works through natural means that God is able to work in his own way providentially so that our benefit, our blessings, the thing that we need, God can give those to us. And so we believe prayer is real and that God is still working today through the avenue of prayer. We also as Christians believe that God hears our prayers and he does answer them. God doesn't ignore the prayer. He hears. The Bible pictures God as attentive to our needs and listening to our prayers. Let, let, let me share with you a couple of verses. Would you open your Bible to 1 Peter chapter 3? I want you to see a beautiful picture of God as attentive to Christians' desires and our needs. Look in 1 Peter chapter 3. Look at verse number 12. The Bible says, For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. Watch this. His ears are open to their prayers, but the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. God's eyes are open. His ears are open. He's watching. He's hearing. He's attentive to our prayers. Uh, look at a, in that same book. Look at 1 Peter 5, verse 7. Look at what Christians are told to do. Cast all your cares, your anxieties upon him. He cares for you. God cares. God wants to know our needs. And the Bible does picture God as attentive and wanting to hear from his children. The problem with prayer is that sometimes we don't always understand or, or see the answer. We think answered prayer is, is only God saying yes to our request. And, and such is not always the case. Helga Gross once said, what we usually pray to God is not that his will will be done, but that he approves ours. And I think sometimes that's exactly right. I've got to factor in. You know, Jesus taught us to pray. When he prayed in the garden, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Not my will, but thine be done. In my prayer life, I've got to factor in the will of God as well. Here's what man thinks he may need. Here's what his request is. Here's what his heartfelt desire is. But you also have to factor that into the will of God and the right timing to make things work for the best of all. You see, the answer to a prayer can come in several forms. We say Christians don't believe in unanswered prayer. We believe God answers every prayer that he hears, but that answer may not always be the answer we think we need to hear. The answer at times may be no. It may not, what I ask for, may not be in my best interest, it may not be the Lord's will, or it may not be in the best interest of others. And thank God that God knows what's best and that I didn't get, nor did you get, everything you asked for, for that might not always be in our best spiritual benefit. The answer sometimes might be, not right now. 
the timing may not be right. Things may not be aligned where that's going to work out for the best. Uh, some other things may have to fall into place before that can happen. And so we see, we understand that, that God is working, that He cares about His people, but sometimes we can't see the end for everything that's right here in the beginning or the middle up front. The answer at time may be, let's wait and see, or maybe. Other factors may need to be examined. Other things may need to happen first. And then sometimes the answer is yes. This is usually when we acknowledge answered prayer. But God answered all those prayers. The answer may not have been exactly what we at that time thought we needed. But God hears. God cares. And thank God, He knows far better than I do what I really need and what is best for the benefit of not just me, but His kingdom and all involved in that situation. Remember these words, 1 Peter 3, 12. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and His ears are open to their prayers, but the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. And so when we think about this idea, let's consider how God does work in our life and how we need these things to help us and to grow as a Christian. When I think about things I need in my life, when I think about things that, that may or may not be good for me or for others, I need to realize that God is at work regardless of whether I see that or not. You see, Jesus taught us to pray, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from the evil. You remember the things that are mentioned there. When Christians pray, we need to realize that prayer is not just a, a give me session. Prayer is not just God, here's what I want. You, you're, you're like, you're like the, here, sometimes I think we have this image in our, in our mind that God is like the genie in the bottle that we can rub and we get three wishes. And when I talk to God, it's a gimme session and God, I need this. And I, you know, prayer sometimes ought to be just our opportunity to communicate with God to praise. You know, a lot of the prayers that you read, especially in the Old Testament, from Ezra, Nehemiah, the Psalms, others that we see in the Old Testament, a lot of those prayers are opportunities for men to, to, to praise, to honor, and to magnify Almighty God, to give Him the glory He is due. Sometimes we see that prayer is an opportunity for us to ask that God would forgive us of things that we've done wrong in this life. In Acts chapter 8, Simon the sorcerer sinned, and Simon said, pray to the Lord for me. Peter said, you're in sin. Your heart's not right with God. Repent therefore and pray that the evil thought of your heart might be forgiven you. And Simon said, pray to the Lord for me that none of the things you have spoken will happen to me. When I think about all that God does and all that God wants me to do, I realize how important prayer is in my life and you do in yours as well. You know, when I think about people who use prayer to help them overcome the difficulties and struggles that they faced in life, I think about King David. I want you to turn to Psalm 51 with me for just a moment. Psalm chapter 51. Let's look in Psalm 51, and I want you to see a man who dealt with the big problem in his life, and he addressed God in prayer and as a result, that man was forgiven of his sin. Look at Psalm 51 with me. The context is, David has committed adultery with Bathsheba. He lied. He uh, was an accessory to murder. He, he uh, involved in adultery. He uh, has a child out of wedlock. They eventually, uh, she becomes pregnant out of wedlock. Just a whole litany of sins occur here. 
But when David finally realized, I've sinned, I've done wrong, he's willing to confess and acknowledge that sin, look at his prayer to God in Psalm 51. David says, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth in inward parts, and in the hidden parts you will make known to me wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, I'll be whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sin, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your way. Sinners shall be converted. And so here in the context... David is dealing with, his heart is heavy with the sin of his adultery with Bathsheba, the murder, everything, the lying. Nathan comes to him. He confesses, acknowledges that sin. But then through the avenue of prayer, he approaches God. His heart is open. He's ready to make things right with God. And friend, when I think about prayer, prayer is such a big part of forgiveness when we do wrong. Prayer gives us the ability to let God know the things in our life that we're struggling. We're not in it alone. Prayer gives us the ability to let God know the things in this life that we're struggling with and that, that all of us face. Uh, listen to some of these verses in the Bible that are so beautiful about the idea of prayer. I want to share with you just a few that show us how important prayer is. Look at where prayer takes you. Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 16. The Bible says this, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we might find grace and mercy to help in time of need. Friend, prayer ushers me before the throne of Almighty God, and it offers, it offers help in time of need. I can approach God, and God promises to help in time of need. When we all get discouraged or face challenges in life, think about what prayer does. Luke chapter 18, verse 1, Men ought always to pray and never lose heart. You ever get discouraged? Life ever get you down? You ever face things that you just don't know how to deal with properly and sometimes you just feel like giving up? Jesus said, men ought always to pray and never lose heart. 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 16 through 18 says, we are to pray without ceasing. That doesn't mean that everything you do in life is prayer, but it does mean there should never be a time when we can't approach the throne of God in prayer, make our requests known to Him, and, and we know God hears our prayer and cares for us. You know, when I think about beautiful passages about prayer, 1 Peter 5 verse 7 is right up at the top. This is kind of a play on words. Cast all your cares upon Him. He cares. Literally, it means Hurl, to cast, to throw them to God. Hurl everything to God. Let God have it is what we say. Cast all your cares upon Him. He cares for you. Friend, isn't it good to know God cares? 
and that God wants to know and wants to help with the needs and the difficulties that we face in this life. And our challenges are not too big for God. God can help us with those in every way. And so, friend, as we've introduced the idea of prayer today, we want you to think about your relationship with God. For a man to have to call God as his father, Matthew 6, verse 9, he's got to submit to, do the will of God, and be in a right relationship with him. And so we ask you today, are you a Christian? Have you obeyed the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Do you believe that he is the Savior of the world. Matthew 1, verses 19 through 21, as Jesus is about to be brought into the world, it says you'll call his name Jesus. He'll save his people from their sins. Do you believe that with all your heart? Jesus said, unless you believe that I am he, I'm the Savior of the world, you'll surely die in your sins. John chapter 8, verse 24, would you be willing to turn from a life of sin and wickedness. You see, all of us have sinned. We've fallen short of the will of God. Romans 3, verse 23, uh, Romans 3, verse 10, we all face the problem of sin. But if I'm willing to turn from that and repent, that's what God wants me to do. Jesus said in Luke 13, 3, unless you repent, you'll all likewise perish. Would you be willing to confess Jesus as your Savior and your Lord? Romans 10 verse 10, with the heart one believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And would you, to get into Christ and to have every sin washed away, be immersed in water? Jesus said, he that believes and is baptized will be saved. We're so glad that you've joined us for our initial lesson on prayer. We encourage you to join us next time as we're going to think more about the power and the importance of prayer. Today's closed captions are brought to you by Christian Family Bookstore in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We encourage you to visit thechristianfamilybookstore.com for all your Christian book needs. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, Internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844 844- Six Gospel. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the gospel of Christ.